Good morning, everyone. I'm Bob Anderson, the interim transition pastor here at the Presbyterian Church of Wyoming, and we are delighted to be together, and I'm delighted that you all are here with us. And today is Easter Sunday, and as you already know from some of our announcements, we're going to be having the Lord's Supper, our service of communion, uh, in just a little bit. So I invite you to take a moment, if you haven't already, to gather up your bread that you've prepared and your juice that you've prepared as part of our Lord's Supper. Uh, and I'll be presenting that later on and we will do that together. Just as a way of making Easter special since we won't be together to hunt eggs and do all the other special things that day. So together, let us prepare to worship God. Please join me for the call to worship. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This day dawns with dreams. Hope is restored. Christ has conquered death. We praise God that we are free to live with love. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.
This morning, our scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. And it's one of the accounts in the Gospels about Jesus' resurrection and how he met Mary on the morning of his resurrection experience. This is an important story for us today as we prepare for communion together and as we go through the difficult time in our society uh, with illness and viruses and all that's been confronting us as a culture and society. So hear the word of the Lord. Mary stood weeping outside Jesus' tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white. They were sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And the angel said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And Mary replied, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have placed him. When she had said this, she turned around and suddenly saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Mary, supposing that he was the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me now, Mary, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to the others and tell them what you have seen and what you have heard. And Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. Lord, teach us through the reading of this scripture. We give our thanks to you. Today is Easter Sunday. We are on Easter Sunday morning. This is the day that we remember that Jesus died, and now Jesus is alive. Hear this version of what Jesus said to Mary. This is one I made up. Mary, don't just stand there. Go tell somebody. Imagine Mary's delight. She was absolutely beyond joy. She found the missing Jesus. All she wanted to do was to hold him, to touch him, talk to him. Is he for real? She wanted confirmation. How can this be? Her heart beat with the hope of possibility while her emotions were overflowing into the passions of a deeply committed disciple and friend. As Mary reached out to grab Jesus and grab his arm and draw herself to him, Jesus responded, Mary, don't hold on to me. Not now. Don't cling. Imagine how she must have felt. Imagine how you would have felt. Here is this great miracle right in front of you, and he said, no, not now. And then Jesus gave her an assignment. Go tell the others what you have seen. Let's take a moment as we prepare for communion to reflect on these words to Mary. Don't cling to me. Don't hold on to me. This was Mary's caution. Something new has begun. The old is gone. The new has arrived. Don't hold on to me. Not Don't hold on to what was because something new is happening. In short, Mary, if you want to know my fullness, you'll need to let go. And sometimes that's our lesson. We need to let go of the old and the accustomed faith understandings that may be ours in order to see Jesus rather than religion. And the Apostle Paul said, When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, and when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. He was telling us that faith grows, 
much like a child. It has a starting place, and it begins to take root, and it matures over time into a faithful and beautiful relationship with God. And that's what Jesus was telling Mary. He wanted her to let go. Don't hold on. This is a new time. She needed to put down roots and grow deep in this relationship with Jesus, now walking in front of her and to grow close to her. As we think about our own selves as we come to this table this morning on an Easter Sunday, what is it in our lives, maybe our culture, maybe our faith in, in the church somewhere, that we need to let go? What do we hold on to that keeps us from experiencing the new that Jesus is promising? There's a risky question for you as we do Easter this year, but the promise is deep and great. Don't hold on. Let go. Let God. And this is why Jesus died and rose, not simply to speak good news, but to demonstrate the good news in the resurrection that evil has been conquered. And that's where Mary's assignment comes in. Mary became the first evangelist that's right. She was the very first missionary. Jesus said, go tell the others. That was her job. Don't hold on. Go tell the others. And she ran and told the others. Her life was turned upside down, but she had a story to tell about her encounter with Jesus. And I wonder, how often do I tell my story about my encounter with Jesus? This year is our opportunity. We've been through a lot together in the last months. And as a congregation, we have uh, somewhere in the, in the near future, we have, we'll have a new pastor coming. And we need to brush up on our stories about how we, met, how we met Jesus and how we've grown so that we can share that. And fruit will begin to be born by that witness and that testimony. You have a story to tell. Mary had one to tell. It was a story that she demonstrated with her hands, with her feet, where she went, with the other disciples as they healed the sick, caused the blind to see, the lame to walk. It was a demonstration of the power of Jesus' resurrection. Take your story. Share it with words. Share it with actions. Share it with love. Share it with perseverance. And watch the Holy Spirit do a work of renewal and new life in your heart, in the heart of our community, across our globe. Now, Lord, take these words and thoughts this Easter Sunday. Make your resurrection power real to each one of us, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. As we gather at the Lord's table this morning, we have heard the story of Mary meeting Jesus after his resurrection. And Jesus said to her, go and tell the others what you have seen and what you have heard. Even though we today are apart from one another, gathered in individual homes perhaps, we are table at table with the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit binds us into one. And this is one of the ways that Jesus asks us to tell. This table tells the story of Christ's love, of Christ's presence with us, of Jesus' death and his resurrection. So as we come to this table, the Lord Jesus invites all those who trust in him as Lord and Savior to gather round and find your bread at home and your cup at home, and we're going to give thanks around it. If you like, you might put your hands on, your, on the plate uh, or on the cup as we pray and give thanks to God for that. Now, Lord Jesus, you have invited us to come because we believe in you, and your life is present with us through your Spirit. So we ask today that you would bless this bread and this cup, that it might be that which nourishes us in faith and gives us strength to live according to your ways and the resurrection life that you impart to us. Help us to tell the story, Lord God. And now, Lord, we give you thanks that Though we are separated by, um, by time and by space, we know that you are drawing us close together. So as we thank you for this bread and this cup, we pray that you would come close to us during this time. We pray for all those in need this morning, for those who are sick, for those who are grieving, for those around us who need new jobs, who need food, whatever their concerns might be, we pray that you would raise up your people today to meet those needs, that we might tell this story of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, who died and now lives again. And we give you grateful thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, on the night of his arrest, gathered around his disciples. And as we gather today, let's hear his words as he shared with them and shares his life with us today. Jesus took the bread of the Passover meal, and he held it up before the disciples and gave thanks for it. And he said to them, this is my body. This is my body broken for you. In Christ's brokenness, we find our wholeness. Praise be to God. And then Jesus took the cup, the cup of wine of the Passover meal, and he poured it out, saying, this is a cup of a new covenant sealed with my blood. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, his death, his resurrection, looking for Christ to come again, and we give grateful thanks. This morning, I invite you, where you are gathered with your bread and your cup, to become part of this wider body of uh, members of PCW, and we'll share together in this service. The Lord Jesus passed out the bread and you have your bread together, let us remember that Jesus' life was sacrificed for us that we might be fed with that life, Christ's presence taken into us through the Holy Spirit. Together, let us share in the bread of life. The Lord Jesus also took the cup after that meal, and having poured that out, gave thanks to God and then said, take and drink. I invite all of you at home to take that cup that you have and remember that this is the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Let us share together as God's people.
We thank you, Lord God, for your blessing this day. We thank you that you have called us to be bound together as your people in this time and in this place. And though we are separated in place, we are never separated from you. And so put your love into our hearts that together we might truly be the body of Jesus Christ. Friends, as we prepare to go to God in prayer on this Easter Sunday, as you probably realize, but I want to remind you, this service was filmed right before the Ohio shelter-in-place order went into effect. And so as I prepared this prayer, I thought about how the world is just changing every minute and things that concerned us a couple of weeks ago may look very different today. There may be different concerns on our heart. So I will pray a prayer on your behalf but I will also leave a space of silence and I'll invite you, wherever you are, to say out loud those names and situations that are on your hearts and spirits and minds today. And as you do, know that I am praying for you and that our spirits are united in prayer this morning. Let us pray. O oh, source of all living things, we praise you for the power of the recurring recreation of life we see around us and for the timeless resurrection of Jesus, our Christ. We trust that in your presence there is hope and possibility, and we can see evidence of that all around us. When it seemed as if community might languish because of social distancing, you inspired us to find new ways of connecting. When schools closed, we found ways to keep learning and teaching. When we couldn't gather for religious services in person, we found ways to minister to each other. You planted a spirit of resurrection deep within us and we are grateful. Our world is changing by the hour and we grieve all of the ways that life is diminished and suffering. We pray for the sick and those who care for them. We pray for tired and anxious spirits. We pray for the financially vulnerable we pray for all who grieve on this resurrection day. And now, church, I will pause, and I invite you, wherever you are, to speak out loud a name or situation that's weighing on your heart today. We can support each other in prayer. God of grace and glory, we thank you that the life of eternity can be ours in the present through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Teach us always to abide in Christ, that we may bear the fruits of love and joy through the guidance of your spirit of truth. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now unto you, Lord God, we give praise and honor and glory, for you are our God of power. You have raised the dead to life, and we give you grateful thanks. And now, Lord, help us as we go out into our world to reach out to our families, to tell our stories. May we do so in the power of your Spirit, knowing the new life that is ours because of Christ Jesus. As God's people, go out in peace, love, and joy. Amen.